within this lesson, you will subtract a mixed number from a mixed number. Here we have 4 and 1 fourth minus 2 and 3 fourths. Here we're going to use a count up strategy to be able to solve. In using this count up strategy, we'll draw a number line. with the endpoints 2 and 5. We'll go ahead and mark off the other whole numbers that are in between 2 and 5. And we'll go ahead and, since we're working with force, we'll go ahead and divide that number line into force. To count up to solve, we'll start at 2 and 3 fourths then. So we're at 2 and 3 fourths. We'll first count up to the next whole number, which is 3. And then so that is plus 1 fourth there. And then we'll go ahead, we're trying to get to 4 and 1 fourth. So we'll count up one more whole to be able to get to 4. So that's plus 1 there. And then, we just need to go one more fourth to be able to get to four and one fourth. So that's one fourth plus another one plus another fourth. So that's a fourth and a fourth, which is two fourths, along with the one. So that is one and one half when I put it into simplest form. Here we'll show that count up strategy one more time. We're seeing how far apart 3 and 4 fifths is from 6 and 2 fifths using this count up strategy. And we're showing that subtraction. So we have our whole numbers 3 in this case, and we'll go one more than 6, which is 7. And we'll mark off our other whole numbers that are in between 3 and 7. In this case, we're working with fifths. And then we are counting up from 3 and 4 fifths. So here is 3 and 4 fifths on our number line. We go up 1 fifth to be able to get to our whole number of 4 to begin with. Then we're going to get to 6. So we go from 4 all the way to 6. That's plus 2. And then we have to travel 2 more from there, and 2 more fifths, that is, to be able to get to 6 and 2 fifths. So reading this, we get plus 1 fifth plus 2 fifths, which is 3 fifths. And then we also have 2 there. Here we have 7 and 1 fifth minus 3 and 3 fifths. Let's look at another approach. Within this approach, you subtract the 1's first. So, with 7 and 1 fifth, we have 7 ones. With 3 and 3 fifths, we have 3 ones. So 7 minus 3 is 4. What still remains, though, is the 1 fifth here. So we have 4 and 1 fifth. And in this case, this is minus 3 fifths. So this now looks like what we had yesterday with 4 and 1 fifth minus a fraction, and we know how to solve that. We can go ahead and break apart 4 and 1 fifth into 3 and 1 fifth along with 1, and then subtract 3 fifths, which is one way. And in this case, that's 3 and 1 fifth plus 2 fifths, which will equal 3 and 3 fifths.
Okay, it is your turn. We have 7 and 3 tenths minus 2 and 7 tenths. Pause the video while you do your work. Let's subtract the 1's first. 7 minus 2 is 5. And then we're left with 3 tenths minus 7 tenths. So again, that was 7 minus 2 is 5. We still have our 3 tenths, and we're subtracting 7 tenths. In doing so, we can go ahead and decompose 5 and 3 tenths into 4 and 3 tenths, along with 1, and still subtract 7 tenths there. So we have 4 and 3 tenths plus 3 tenths, which equals 4 and 6 tenths. So that is our answer there, 4 and 6 tenths. You'll notice if we were to check this, 6 tenths plus 7 tenths is 13 tenths. And then we have 4 plus 2, which is 6. So 6 and 13 tenths does equal 7 and 3 tenths, so it does check. So our answer again is 4 and 6 tenths. Hopefully you simplified that to 4 and 3 fifths. Let's solve this one here in another way. We have 9 and 1 fifth minus 2 and 2 fifths. We'll still first subtract 9 minus 2, which gives us 7. So that's 7 and 1 fifth minus 2 fifths. We can break apart 2 fifths into 1 fifth and another fifth. The reason that we broke it apart into a fifth here is so that we can go ahead and subtract 7 and 1 fifth minus a fifth. So 7 and 1 fifth minus a fifth gives us 7. And then if we take away another fifth from there, pumping down 1 fifth from 7, we would have 6 and 4 fifths. So our answer is 6 and 4 fifths. Let's look at that one more time. 9 minus 2 is 7, so we have 7 and 3 eighths minus 7 eighths, where we've rewritten that. We break apart 7 eighths, this time into 3 eighths, so that we can subtract 3 eighths from 3 eighths. And then 3 eighths, along with 4 more eighths, equals 7 eighths. So we have 7 and 3 eighths minus 3 eighths, and then we'll subtract another 4 eighths. The whole number 6 here, we would have 7, and then let's go ahead and divide this into 8s. Here we start with 7 and 3 eighths here. We subtract 3 eighths, and then we're subtracting another 4 eighths. And in subtracting another 4 eighths, we end up with 6 and 4 eighths, which we know also equals 6 and 1 half. Showing this in much the same way that we did on the previous screen there, that again was 9 minus 2, which is 7. So we had 7 and 3 eighths minus 7 eighths. That was 7 and 3 eighths, where we subtracted 3 eighths first to get 7. And then we subtracted 4 eighths, because we had broken apart 7 eighths into 3 eighths and 4 eighths, to be able to get 6 and 4 eighths. So that is how you can subtract mixed numbers. We looked at different strategies to be able to do so.